annexed to my will. Longwood, Island of St. Helena, this 15th of April, 1821. One, the consecrated vessels which have been in use at my chapel at Longwood. Two, I direct Abby Vignali to preserve them and to deliver them to my son when he shall reach the age of 16 years. Two, my arms, that is to say my sword, that which I wore at Austerlitz, the saber of Sobieski, my dagger, my broadsword, my hanger, my two pair of Versailles pistols, too. My gold dressing case, that which I made use of on the morning of Ulm and of Austerlitz, of Jena, of Eilau, of Friedland, of the island of Lobau, of the Moskva, of Montmirai. In this point of view, it is my wish that it may be precious in the eyes of my son. It has been deposited with Count Petran since 1814-3. I charge Count Petran with the care of preserving these objects and of conveying them to my son, and he shall attain the age of 16 years. Three. Three small mahogany boxes containing the first 33 snuff boxes or comfit boxes, the second 12 boxes with the imperial arms, two small eyeglasses, and four boxes found on the table of Louis the 18th in the Tuileries on the 20th of March 1815. The third three snuff boxes ornamented with silver medals, habitually used by the emperor, and sundry articles for the use of the toilet. According to the lists numbered one, two, and three. Two, my field's bed, which I used in all my campaigns. Three, my field telescope. Four, my dressing case. One of each of my uniforms, a dozen of shirts, and a complete set of each of my dresses. And generally of everything used in my toilet. Five, my wash hand stand. Six, the small clock, which is in my bedchamber at Longwood. Seven, my two watches and the chain of the Empress's hair. Eight, I entrust to carry these articles to Marchand, my principal valet de chambre, and direct him to convey them to my son when he shall attain the age of 16 years. Fourth, my cabinet of medals. Two, my plate and my service china, which I used in St. Helena. Three, I request Count Maudsalon to take care of these articles and to convey them to my son when he shall attain the age of 16 years. Five, my three saddles and bridles, my spurs, which I used in St. Helena. Two, my fowling pieces, to the number five. Three, I charge my chasseur, Novaraz, with the care of these articles and direct him to convey them to my son when he shall attain the age of 16 years. Six, 400 volumes selected from those in my library, which I have been accustomed to use the most. Two, I direct Saint Denis to take care of them and to convey them to my son when he shall attain the age of 16 years. Napoleon, list A. One, none of the articles which have been used by me shall be sold. The residue shall be divided amongst the executors of my will and my brothers. Two, Marchand shall preserve my hair and cause a bracelet to be made of it with a little gold clasp to be sent to Empress Marie Louisa, to my mother, and to each of my brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, the cardinal, and one of larger size for my son. Three, Marchand will send one pair of my gold shoe buckles to Prince Joseph. Four, a small pair of gold knee buckles to Prince Lucy. And five, a gold collar clasp to Prince Jerome. List A, inventory of my effects, which Marchand will take care of and convey to my son. One, my silver dressing case, that which is on my table, furnished with all its utensils and razors. Two, my alarm clock, it is the alarm clock of Frederick II, which I took at Potsdam in box three. Three, my two watches with the chain of the empress's hair and a chair, a chain of my own hair for the other watch. Marchand will get it made at Paris for my two seals. One of the seal of France contained in box number three, five, the small gold clock, which is now in my bedchamber, six, my washstand and its water jug, seven, my night tables, those I used in France, and my silver gilt bidet, eight, my two iron bedsteads my mattresses, and my coverlets, if they can be preserved. Nine, my three silver decanters, which held my eau de vie, and which my chasseurs carried in the field. Ten, my French telescope. Eleven, my spurs, two pair. Twelve, 
three mahogany boxes, number one, two, three, containing my snuff boxes and other articles, 13, a silver gilt perfuming pan, body linen, six shirts, six handkerchiefs, six cravats, six napkins, six pair of silk stockings, four black stocks, six pair of understockings, two pair of cambric sheets, two pillowcases, two dressing gowns, two pair of night drawers, one pair of braces, four pair of white kerseymere breeches and vests, six mattress, six flannel waistcoats, four pair of drawers, six pair of gaiters, one small box filled with my snuff, one gold neck buckle, one pair of gold knee buckles, one pair of gold shoe buckles, clothes, one uniform of the chasseurs, ditto grenadiers, ditto national guard, two hats, one green and gray, gray coat, one blue coat, that which I had at Marengo, one sable green police, two pair of shoes, two pair of boots, one pair of slippers, six belts, Napoleon, list B, inventory of the effects which I left in the possession of Monsieur the Count de Turenne, one saber of Sobieski, one grand collar of the Legion of Honor, one sword of silver gilt, one consular sword, one sword of steel, one velvet belt, one collar of the golden fleece, one small dressing case of steel, one night lamp of silver, one handle of an antique saber, one hat a la Henri IV, and a toque, the lace of the emperor, one small cabinet of medals, two turkey carpets, two mantles of crimson velvet embroidered with vests and small clothes. I give to my son the saber Sobieski, the collar of the Legion of Honor, the sword, silver gilt, the consular sword, the steel sword, the collar of the golden fleece, the hat a la Henry IV, and the toque, the golden dressing case for the teeth, which is in the hands of the dentist, to the Empress Maria Louisa, my lace, to Madame, the silver night lamp, to the cardinal, the small steel dressing case, to Prince Eugène, the wax candlestick, silver gilt, to the Princess Pauline, the small cabinet of medals, to the Queen of Naples, a small turkey carpet to queen Ortons, a small turkey carpet to prince jerome the handle of the antique saber to prince joseph an embroidered mantle vest and small clothes to prince lucy an embroidered mantle vest and small clothes napoleon this 24th of april 1821 longwood this is my codicil or act of my last will upon the funds remitted in gold to the Empress Maria Louisa, my very dear and well-beloved spouse at Orleans in 1814. She remains in my debt to millions, of which I dispose the present codicil for the purpose of recompensing my most faithful servants, who, moreover, I recommend to the protection of my dear Maria Louisa. One, I recommend to the Empress to cause the income of 30,000 francs, which Count Bertrand possessed in the Duchy of Parma and upon the Mount Napoleon at Milan to be restored to him as well as the arrears do. To I make the same recommendation to her with regard to the Duke of Istria, to Rock's daughter, and others of my servants who have continued faithful to me and who have never ceased to be dear to me. She knows them. Three out of the above mentioned two millions, I bequeath three hundred thousand francs to Count Bertrand, of which he will lodge one hundred thousand in the treasures just to be employed in legacies of conscience, according to my dispositions. Four, I bequeath two hundred thousand francs to Count Launcelot, of which he will lodge one hundred thousand in the treasures just for the same purpose as above mentioned. Five, item two hundred thousand francs to countless causes, of which he will lodge one hundred thousand francs in the treasure's chest for the same purpose as above mentioned. Six, to my Sean, 100,000 francs, of which he will place 50,000 in the treasure's chest for the same purpose as above mentioned. Seven, to Jean-Jerome Levy, the mayor of Ayaccio, at the commencement of the revolution, or to his widowed children or grandchildren, 100,000 francs. Eight, to Duroc's daughter, 100,000 francs. Nine, to the son of Bessier, Duke of Istria, 100,000 francs. 10 to General Giraud, 100,000 francs. 11 to Count Lavalette, 100,000 francs. 12 item, 100,000 francs. That is to say, 25,000 to Pierrot, my maitre d'hotel. 25,000 to Navarre, my chester. 25,000 to Saint Denis, the keeper of my books. 25,000 to Santini, 
my former doorkeeper. 13 item, 100,000 francs. That is to say, 40,000 to Planat, my orderly officer. 20,000 to Hebert, lately housekeeper, Rambier, who belonged to my chamber in Egypt. 20,000 to Lavigny, who was lately keeper of one of my stables, and who was my piquer in Egypt. 20,000 to Jean Derville, who was overseer of the stables and served me in Egypt. 14, 200,000 francs shall be distributed in alms to the inhabitants of Brienne le Chateau, who have suffered most. 15, 300,000 francs remaining shall be distributed to the officers and soldiers of the battalion of my guard at the island of Elba, who may be now alive, or to their widows and children in proportion to their appointments and according to an estimate which shall be fixed by my testamentary executors who have suffered amputation or have been severely wounded shall receive double the estimate to be fixed by Larry and Emery. This codicil is written entirely with my own hand, signed and sealed with my arms. Napoleon is 24th, April 1821, Longwood. This is my codicil or note of my last will, out of the settlement of my civil list of Italy, such as money, jewels, plate, linen, equipages, of which the viceroy is a depository, and which belong to me, I disposed of two millions, which I bequeathed to my most faithful servants. I hope that without availing himself of any reason to the contrary, my son Uja and Napoleon will pay them faithfully. He cannot forget the 40 millions which I gave him in Italy, and in the distribution of the inheritance of his mother. One out of these two millions I bequeath to Count Bertrand 300,000 francs, of which he will deposit 100,000 in the treasure's chest to be disposed of according to my dispositions and payment of legacies of conscious two to count montalon two hundred thousand francs of which he will deposit one hundred thousand in the chest for the same purpose as above mentioned three to countless causes two hundred thousand francs of which he will deposit one hundred thousand in the chest for the same purpose as above mentioned four to marchand one hundred thousand francs of which he will deposit fifty thousand in the chest for the same purpose as above mentioned five to count lavalette one hundred thousand francs six to General Hogendorf of Holland, my aide de camp, who has retired to the Brazils, 100,000 francs. Seven to my aide de camp, Corbino, 50,000 francs. Eight to my aide de camp, General Caffarelli, 50,000 francs. Nine to my aide de camp, De Jean, 50,000 francs. Ten to Percy, surgeon in chief at Waterloo, 50,000 francs. Eleven, 50,000 francs. That is to say, 10,000 to Pierre Rowan, my major d'hotel. 10,000 to Saint Denis, my head chest, sir. 10,000 to Novaraz, 10,000 to Crusoe, my clerk of the kitchen. 10,000 to Archambault, my piqueur. 12, to Baron de Meneval, 50,000 francs. 13, to the Duke of Istria, son of Bessier, 50,000 francs. 14, to the daughter of Duroc, 50,000 francs. 15, to the children of Le Bataillère, 50,000 francs. 16, to the children of Mouton, Duvernay. 50,000 francs. 17, to the children of the brave and virtuous, General Travaux, 50,000 francs. 18, to the children of Chartrand, 50,000 francs. 19, to General Cambron, 50,000 francs. 22, General Lefebvre Denuet, 50,000 francs. 21, to be distributed amongst such prescribed persons as wander in foreign countries, whether they be French, Italian, Belgians, Dutch, Spanish, or inhabitants of the departments of the Rhine under the direction of my executors and upon their orders 100,000 francs. 22, to be distributed amongst those who suffered amputation or were severely wounded at Ligny or Waterloo, who may be still living, according to the list drawn up my, my executors, to whom shall be added Cabron, Larry, Percy, and Emery. The guards shall be paid double. Those of the island of Elba quadruple, 200,000 francs. This codicil is written entirely with my own hand, signed and sealed with my arms. Napoleon. This 24th of April, 1821 at Longwood, this is a third codicil to my will of the 15th of April, one amongst the diamonds of the crown, which were delivered up in 1814. There were some to the value of five or 600,000 francs not belonging to it but which form part of my private property. Repossession shall be obtained of them in order to discharge my legacies. 
too. I had in the hands of the banker, Torloni at Rome, bills of exchange to the amount of two, three hundred thousand francs, a product of my revenues for the island of Elba since 1815, to Sir de la Perusa, although no longer my treasurer and not vested with any character, possessed himself of this sum, he shall be compelled to refund it. Three, I bequeath to the Duke of Istria 300,000 francs, of which only 100,000 francs shall be reversible to his widow should the Duke be dead before payment of the legacy. It is my wish, should there be no inconvenience in it, that the Duke may marry Duroc's daughter. For I bequeath to the Duchess of Friul, the daughter of Duroc, 200,000 francs, should she be dead before the payment of this legacy, none of it shall be given to the mother. Five, I bequeath to Generico to him who was prescribed 100,000 francs. Six, I bequeath to Boisnod, the intendant commissary, 100,000 francs. Seven, I bequeath to the children of General Latour, who was killed in the campaign of 1815, 100,000 francs. Eight, these 800,000 francs of legacy shall be considered as inserted at the end of Article 36 of my testament, which will make the legacies I have disposed of by will amount to the sum of 6,400,000 francs without including the donations I have made by my second coded So This is written with my own hand, signed and sealed with my arms, Napoleon. On the outside is written, this is... My third codicil to my will, entirely written in my own hand, signed and sealed with my arms, to be opened the same day and immediately after the opening of my will. Napoleon, this 24th April, 1821, Longwood. This is a fourth codicil to my testament. By the dispositions we have heretofore made, we have not fulfilled all of our obligations, which has decided us to make this fourth, co fourth codicil. One, we bequeath, bequeath to the son or grandson of... Baron Dutai, Lieutenant General of Artillery and formerly Lord of St. Andre, who commanded the School of Oxon before the Revolution, the sum of 100,000 francs, as a memento of gratitude for the care which that brave general took of us when we were lieutenant and captain under his orders. Two item, to the son and grandson of General de Gomier, who commanded in chief the army of Toulon, the sum of 100,000 francs, we under his orders directed that siege and commanded the artillery. It is a testimonial of remembrance for the marks of esteem, affection, and friendship which that brave and intrepid general gave us. Three, we bequeath 100,000 francs to the son and grandson of the deputy of the convention, Gasparin representative of the people at the army of Toulon for having protected and sanctioned with his authority the plan we had given which procured the capture of that city and which was contrary to that sent by the committee of public safety Gasparin by his protection sheltered us from the persecution and ignorance of the general officers who commanded the army before the arrival of my friend de Gomier for we bequeath 100,000 francs to the widow's son or grandson of our aide de camp where Rome killed at our side at our cola, covering us with his body. Five, 10,000 francs to the subaltern officer Cantillon, who has undergone a trial upon the charge of having endeavored to assassinate Lord Wellington, of which he was pronounced innocent. Cantillon had as much right to assassinate that oligarchist, as the latter had to send me to perish upon the rock of St. Helena, Wellington, who proposed this outrage, attempted to justify it by pleading the interest of Great Britain. Cantillon, if he had really assassinated that lord, would have pleaded the same excuse and been justified by the same motive, the interest of France, to get rid of this general, who moreover, by violating the capitulation of Paris, had rendered himself responsible for the blood of the martyrs, nay, Le Bedoyer, ETC, and for the crime of having pillaged the museums, contrary to the text of the treaties. Six, these 400,000 francs shall be added to the 6,400,000, of which we have disposed and will make our legacies amount to 6,800,000 and 10,000 francs. These 410,000 
are to be considered as forming part of our testament article 36 and to follow in every respect the same course as the other legacies seven the nine thousand pounds sterling which we gave to count and countess de montalon should if they have been paid be deducted and carried to the account of the legacies which we have given him by our testament if they have not been paid our Notes of hand shall be annulled. Eight, in consideration of the legacy given to our will to Count Montsalon, the pension of 20,000 francs granted to his wife is annulled. Count Montsalon is charged with the payment of it to her. Nine, the administration of such an inheritance until its final liquidation, requiring ex- Expenses of office, journeys, missions, consultations, and lawsuits. We expected our testamentary executors shall retain 3% upon all the legacies as well as upon the 6,800,000 francs as upon the sums contained in the codicils and upon the 200 millions of francs of the private domain. 10. The amount of the sums thus retained shall be deposited in the hands of a treasurer and dispersed by drafts from our testamentary executors. 11. Should the sums arising from the aforesaid deductions not be sufficient to defray the expenses, provision shall be made to that effect at the expense of the three testamentary executors and the treasurer each in proportion to the legacy which we have bequeathed to them in our will and codicils 12 should the sums arising from the before mentioned subtractions be more than necessary the surplus shall be divided amongst our three testamentary executors and the treasurer in the proportion of their respective legacies. 13. We nominate countless causes and in default of him his son and in default of the latter General Giraud to be treasurer this present codicil is entirely written with our hands signed and sealed with our arms Napoleon. First letter to Monsieur Lafitte. Monsieur Lafitte I delivered to you in 1815 at the moment of my departure from Paris a sum of nearly six millions for which you gave me a receipt in duplicate. I have canceled one of the receipts and I direct Count Monson to present the other receipt to you in order that you may pay to him after my death the said sum with interest at a rate of 5% from the 1st of July, 1815, deducting the payments which you have been instructed to make by virtue of my orders. It is my wish that the settlement of your account be agreed upon between you, Count Monson, Count Bertrand, and this year, Marchand, and that settlement be made. I give you, by these presents, a complete and absolute discharge from the said sum. I also, at that time, placed in your hands a box containing my cabinet of medals. I beg you will deliver it to Count Montalon, this letter having no other object. I pray God, Monsieur Lafitte, to have you in his holy and good keeping. Napoleon, Longwood, Island of St. Helena, the 25th April, 1821. Second letter to the Baron, La Brouillerie. Monsieur Le Baron, La Brouillerie, treasurer of my private domain, I beg you will deliver the account and the amount thereof. After my death to Count Montalon, whom I have charged with the execution of my will, this letter having no other object, I pray God, Monsieur Le Baron, Le Brouillerie, to have you in his holy and good keeping. Napoleon, Longwood, Island of St. Helena, 25th April, 1821. The storm had ceased, but it blew fresh, and we were soon in sight of the coast and successfully discovered the Isle of Wight, Portsmouth, and Spithead, where we anchored on the 31st July. After an unpleasant passage of 65 days, the officer to whom Hudson had entrusted his dispatches set off immediately for London, but we were confined on board. The King of England was parading at some distance from us. The ships were firing, the forts returning the fire, and in the midst of these volleys and detonations, our camel did not remain behind hand. Gun followed, gun on all sides. We were completely stunned, and we were cursing these noisy rejoicings when we saw the squadron which escorted George the Fourth to bear down upon us. His majesty approached, directed his glass upon us, and sent three persons of his suite to congratulate us upon our arrival. The compliments having been delivered, 
questions followed. They deplored the death of Napoleon and expressed a great desire to know every particularity and every circumstance, however trifling, attending it. Being Napoleon's physician, I was particularly the object of their marks of kindness and attention, but I was within sight of the land whence the orders of death had issued. I was not disposed to be very communicative. <laughs>